Welcome to the Working Moms Podcast, featuring inspiring stories and resources for the modern working mom. I'm your host, estate planning attorney, investor, and pregnant mama-to-be, Pam Moss. All right, today's guest is Dr. Allison Brown. She is a dentist and the owner of High Forest Dental in Littleton, Colorado. Hello, Allison. Thank you for being with me today. Hi, Pam. Thanks for having me. So I'd love to kind of start by just hearing about your background and kind of what led you to become a dentist and a business owner. Sure. So I decided I wanted to be a dentist probably when I was like nine years old. (laughs) So it's been like kind of my plan since I was really little. Um, I went through ortho really young. When my teeth came in, they were all over the place not in good position. So I went through like the whole two phase ortho. Um, and it was really my orthodontist that kind of opened my eyes up to the field. So everyone always seemed like they were having such a great time. You know, they fixed my smile. Um, I think gave me confidence, you know, at a young age that I wouldn't have had. Um, so I feel like I probably, you know, socially had a lot less hardship than I could have just getting my smile fixed. Cause I just felt more comfortable. Um, and as I got older, I just wanted to be able to offer that to other people. Um, on top of that, my parents are actually both in the dental field. So my mom has been a hygienist for gosh, like 35, almost 40 years, um, in California. My dad has been an oral surgeon in California for same like 35, 40 years. So just had a lot of exposure to it. I love people, love science, math. I'm a super nerd. So it just ultimately <laughs> fit. It was like a, a natural place to go. And I love that. And I, you know, I went through a lot of ortho work as a kid <laughs> and was terrified. Yep. <laughs> that, that field. So I'm so like impressed that that kind of was your inspiration and kind of your pushing off point. Um, it sounds like you might have had better, <laughs> better care than I might have had. But I think a lot of people kind of share that nervousness around going to the dentist and maybe put it off. Could you speak a little bit about that? I know you and I have spoken offline about people kind of being afraid of going to the dentist and what are kind of some things that you yourself do to make your patients comfortable and what as a consumer should I be looking for so I can have a better experience? Yeah, absolutely. Um, And honestly, that's kind of another reason why I like being a dentist, because to me, I get such satisfaction out of helping people who are afraid feel comfortable and confident again, because your oral health is so important to just your overall health that it's something that, you know, seems so easy to just sort of put by the wayside, but the rest of your health will, you know, start to deteriorate really really quickly uh, if you do. So, um, you know, ultimately we are a private practice. So I really like to make sure that we have enough time to spend with every person that we're not rushing through things. You know, one of my favorite things is connecting with people and learning your story and learning about you as a person. So, um, you know, to me, I feel like if dentists would just slow down, spend time, get to know, you know, people's fears and like their concerns and really like ultimately what they're looking for, then it takes a lot of the fear out of it because I mean, we're here to help, you know, I, I want to help people carry out their goals and, you know, find health and, and be happy doing it (laughs) and not dread coming. So um, yeah, I feel like our biggest thing is we just slow it down and talk to people and um, you know, we've got things like nitrous and headphones and, um, you know, topical anesthetics and things like that, that we use too, to just try to help people feel, you know, comfortable. Um, but I think more than anything is just treating people like individuals. So when you're looking for a dentist, I think to me, that would be important to me. Um, there are many offices that are very volume based. So they're taking maybe a lot of insurance plans, but they're able to recoup that loss by seeing just tons of people per hour. And, and that's where you start to get into the, no one explains anything to you. You don't really feel like you're being heard. Um, and it just feels kind of like a, a cattle drive. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I feel like in looking, I mean, it sort of depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for, 
the cheapest option, then maybe something like that is, is what would suit that best. But if you're looking for like a better experience and something that's going to make you feel comfortable and happy and, you know, that somebody's going to have your back and stand by your, by your work, I think looking for a practice that's kind of more set up like we do is, is probably the best. Um, do you come across people who have not been to the dentist for many, many, many years? Oh, all the time. (laughs) Absolutely all the time. I think it's even on our website, like whether it's been six months or six or 30 years or something like that, you know, feel comfortable coming to us. Um, yes, it happens all the time. And I feel like even more now recently, since we opened back up, I feel like we've had even more people, um, just mentioned that they haven't been to the dentist in, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. Um, and sadly, I mean, it, I feel sad for it, but a lot of their reasoning is just, you know, the last time I went, I just felt really like shamed and it was uncomfortable and I didn't feel like they were listening to me. So I just feel like that is something I want to change in our field. Um, just in general that people don't feel so afraid to go to the dentist, but yeah, all the time. And many of those people we see again and again, and they're so happy. One actually just brought us a cheesecake last week. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. I love that. Um, so one of the questions that um, I had when, when I was kind of prepping for, for today was, you know, for the parents that are listening, you know, what is the right age to start taking your kid to the dentist? When should you start thinking about dental care for your kiddos? Absolutely. I mean, when you should start thinking about dental care for the kiddo just in general would be as soon as they get their first tooth um, at home, not necessarily coming into the dentist. Um, The American Dental Association suggests that you see a dentist when they hit their first birthday and then kind of go every six months from there. I'd say anywhere between one and two, depending on the child. I mean, I know my son, for instance, at one year had two teeth. So there's not a lot to look at. (laughs) He's a little slow. Um, But a lot of kids do have, you know, many of their teeth, like at least the eight in the front and even some molars in the back. So um, whenever you're in that situation, it's, you know, more or less the first several visits, we like to call them happy visits. You know, we want the kids to come in, introduce them to all of the crazy stuff that we have in our office. Um, We've got fun names for everything like Mr. Slurpee and there's Quirk Gun and uh, Mr. Bumpy. So um, yeah, I I think it's great to see them, you know, around one and a half, two and best if they don't have problems because then we can just have fun with them. And we basically just do as much as we can. um, And as much as they'll let us, a lot of letting them touch things, feel things, uh, experience, you know, just the atmosphere of a dental office. Uh, and every six months from then is, is great. Um, because that way they just get more exposure. So, um, we don't necessarily try taking x-rays the first few visits, uh, especially if kids have spacing because you don't need them. Uh, we can actually see everything visually. Um, and it's, absolutely not uncommon for kids to cry their first couple visits. And we always tell parents, don't worry, they're okay. And actually when they cry, we can see because <laughs> you, it's like the one time you can see in their mouth. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think between one and two and um, at home, you know, my son didn't get teeth in until really late. I think his first ones came in at like 10 months or so. Usually they're like six, seven months, but um, I just, took a little like finger toothbrush in there on his gums for like, you know, months before they even came. The more you can get in there and get them used to having something in their mouth like that, just the easier it's going to be. Were you kind of doing that brushing every day? Like you would for your own, like every morning and night kind of doing the gum brushing? Yeah. I probably started when he was like seven months old, just with this little like plastic little finger toothbrush Um, because I just was like, man, I don't know where your teeth are, but when they do come in, I don't want this to be like a nightmare. So, um, it helped a lot because at first he was like, what the heck are you doing? (laughs) Get that out of my mouth. So by the time they actually came in, he's like, he's been letting me get in there and and get things adequately clean. (laughs) 
Um, and how old is your son now? He's almost 20 months. So yeah, I know. Crazy. Um, and how, like how in those first few years does the kind of dental needs for a child change, you know, kind of the first time you're saying in the first year, a year and a half. Um, and then kind of, what are you kind of looking for as your child progresses when it comes to bringing them into a dentist? Sure. Yeah. A lot of it's like just kind of coaching for the parents, you know, proper diet and hygiene for the child to try to minimize risk for cavities. Um, the other thing that we do when you come in is place a fluoride varnish on the teeth. So that will help prevent cavities. Um, you know, kids are going to do pretty much, or they're going to be able to do whatever their parents do. So Um, I think it's just really important to get parents on board. So, you know, when teeth touch floss or, you know, make sure you're brushing twice a day snack wise, you know, try and stay away from the gummy sticky things that are going to stay on the teeth for a long time Kind of stick to like fruits and, uh, cheeses and things that will kind of cleanse off the teeth a lot faster and, and not be so cavity promoting, um, things like juices, uh, we suggest not really giving kids juice. Um, and if you do diluting it by over, over half. I mean, if you can dilute it like 75%, that's best. Um, but really sticking to just water. So, um, yeah, I think coming in every six months helps just condition the child to not be so fearful. So then when we do have to do stuff, it's not so scary, but then all along the way, I feel like just helping parents help the kids, you know, not get cavities. I, the last thing I want to do is (laughs) dental work on a child. (laughs) I'd like to prevent it at all costs. And then I know you have uh, the Healthy Start program. Can you tell us a little bit about what that program is and and what parents need to know about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, The Healthy Start program is awesome. Um, This is something that I wish I knew about when I was younger and probably you too, because we probably would have had a lot less extensive ortho (laughs) as a result. Um, But the Healthy Start program is actually, it's a program to help correct oral habits Um, like mouth breathing, um, and also develop a proper airway to help prevent sleep apnea as the child gets older. So into, you know, adulthood, you've developed that proper airway, so you're not dealing with sleep apnea. Um, And kind of a wonderful aside is they have this orthotain system that actually has these tooth wells that are built into it. So as the teeth are coming in, they actually act as a template to help guide the tooth into proper position. So uh, what it does is it holistically helps guide growth and development of the mid face, the mandible, your palates, um, and then also guiding the teeth into proper position in the right bite. Um, So we start kind of screening for oral habits and just kind of risk factors around three, four, five years old. Um, cause a lot of those like mouth breathing, teeth grinding, kind of ADD like behaviors, bedwetting, um, actually chronic allergies. Those are all kind of signs and symptoms of something called sleep disordered breathing, um, which is a sign that there's an airway problem and that the airway is not developing properly. So, at that age, or I'd say usually around four or five, um, we'll incorporate something called a habit corrector, um, which is an oral appliance that the child wears at night. Um, it's very soft and spongy, so they're comfortable. Um, but what it does is it helps open the airway um, and it helps guide the mid face and the mandible to grow together. Um, Cause a lot of times with these airway problems, the problem is that they're not growing together. Either the mandible or the mid face is um, slower than the other one. So when that's the case, you start to get a constricted airway, kids not sleeping well, you'll notice little bags under the eyes or kind of the dark venous pooling under there. And a lot of the behavior problems kind of stem from that lack of sleep. So these habit correctors help correct that. Um, It also guides the tongue to go into the proper position when they're swallowing. So to develop the proper habits so they don't end up with like tongue thrusts or things like that, that are gonna cause issues with development of the palate. Um, So the habit correctors, generally, if we're getting into them at that age, you'll be in them for like eight, nine months or until the habits are corrected. 
Um, and then you can kind of take a holiday from it if, if you want, um, if the kids are, you know, not really needing it anymore. And then you'd go into that full orthotane system where we're kind of talking about guiding those permanent teeth into proper position. As soon as they lose their first tooth is the best time to start. So first tooth comes out, you start to see the permanent tooth come in. That would be a perfect time to take records and get a treatment plan and, and start the system. So um, just to kind of back up um, on a few points that you said, so is the Healthy Start program a national program? Can you tell us a little bit about kind of its origins and, and how you ended up starting to use that at your practice? Yeah, so it's actually something that's been around since the 90s, um, but it didn't have a lot of press. Um, and also it's not been uh, probably the last five years, I think sleep apnea has started to gain a lot of um just information, people are, are researching about it and they're starting to realize that sleep apnea is actually tied to all of these really kind of bad medical conditions. And they're finding that if you treat sleep apnea, it will actually help people with their blood pressure, diabetes, like the, I mean, the list goes on of, of those. So I think in learning how important it is to treat sleep apnea for adults, this has started to gain more popularity because this is actually treating the source. Um, and helping prevent that for our kids in the future. Um, I got certified actually a little over a year ago. So it was like a year and a half ago um, while I was working with my last practice. It was something that we kind of came across, learned about, and then did like a, a whole course to learn more and, and get certified in it. So I've been doing it for like about a year. Um, I bought my practice a little over a year ago now. So it's been a little like, you know, slow process trying to get everything with my practice, you know, organized and this up and running. Um, but it's something that I'm really excited to offer because I know there aren't that many providers in the Denver metro area that do offer it. And I think it's just really important. And I love the focus on preventative and, um, gosh, yeah. I mean, I wish this was around when I was a kid because <laughs> yeah. it was really treating, um, the symptoms and, and the end results, you know, that's very expensive down the road. Braces are very expensive, um, retainers, all of that. And I love the idea of kind of preventative and doing this types of things. Now, it seems like we continue to get smarter and smarter. About it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> So what is the kind of the age range that um, parents can bring their kids to have an evaluation? Like what is the age range that would fit into this type of program? Yeah. So if they are noticing symptoms related to that sleep disordered breathing, um, which I'm happy to share a sleep questionnaire with you, if you want to post that somewhere, um, I would say as early as four or five years old, um, that would be a good time because that is a great time to start the habit corrector. Doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna go through the whole system, but there's a lot of that that you can correct with just that simple appliance. Um, if they're starting to lose teeth already, it doesn't mean that you've um, lost out. Um, I would say probably, you know, in a perfect world when they're losing their first teeth is, is when we would wanna see them. But if they're like in the range of, you know, six to 10, that's still very reasonable to take a look and see if they'd be a good candidate for it. And I can definitely include in the show notes, the evaluation link. Um, I'll get that from you, but what are some of those things on the evaluation link that, uh, checklist that you were describing that if parents see that it might be worth them coming in and getting an evaluation? Yeah. So those are going to be the things like, uh, mouth breathing, snoring, teeth grinding, uh, bed wetting, night terrors, um, yeah, ADD type behaviors, allergies. Uh, those are all some signs and symptoms, uh, like inability to to focus, um, sleepy during the day, uh, the like kind of dark circles under the eyes. Those can all be, and even actually speech problems too. So anybody who's, you know being suggested to go to speech therapy. Sometimes that can also be something that can be addressed with Healthy Start. And um, how long is the typical kiddo, kiddo in that program as far as how long does the treatment typically last? Yeah, so if you start that habit corrector really early, 
Um, like I said, it'd be like eight, nine months. Hopefully they, you know, the habits would be corrected. They can take a little holiday. Um, and then that full system really would be the duration of however long it takes them to lose all their teeth. So um, the difference obviously between this and ortho is that you're not wearing them all day. Um, generally it's going to be a nighttime appliance. And then once you get into that like templated sort of appliance, there's usually some active wear that we have them do during the day, but it's usually anywhere from like one to two hours a day. Um, but in like 15 minute increments. So like, for instance, you know, working it into your lifestyle. So it, if they have like study time, well, maybe they'll wear it for 15 minutes every time you're on, like you're reading a page on the left, bite really hard into the appliance, relax when you're on the page to the right, switch the page. So just trying to figure out like their daily routines and how to work that into, you know, their normal life so that it's not something that feels like a burden. It's something that they just can add um, into, into life. Um, but yeah, I would say however long it takes them to, to lose teeth. So probably like seven to 11 or so. What are some of the like kind of long-term benefits that you've seen or that people have seen coming out of going through this program? Does it prevent them from having to have more intensive stuff down the road? Is it kind of that short-term benefit of treating those symptoms now? Like what are some of the benefits that you've seen? A little bit of both. So the short term would be, you know, obviously, um, behavioral, uh, bedwetting terrors, like things like that go away, grinding, snoring, <laughs> how helpful for anyone else sleeping in the same room. Um, and then the kind of long term, I mean, the biggest is just that they've developed a proper airway and sleep apnea is not necessarily going to be an issue for them as an adult, which I think is awesome. Um, secondarily, the other really amazing thing is you're catching their teeth and you're guiding them into proper position the first time they come in. So the fibers and gums are attaching to those teeth in that position from the very beginning. Um, that helps with retention over time. So you're going to have much less chance that your teeth will shift and crowd as you age because the fibers aren't remembering any previous position. Um, with traditional ortho, we're waiting for the teeth to come in. They come in the wrong spot. All the fibers have already developed. So when you start going through ortho, what we're actually doing is like cutting the fibers and moving them and then getting everything into proper position and then asking the fibers to reattach to the tooth. So you do get reattachment, of course, and the longer you are in retention, like retainers, you know, the more they'll remember that new position, but those old fibers will never actually truly forget. So that's where you get into, if you stop wearing your retainers, your teeth pretty much start shifting right away, um, no matter when you stop. So um, yeah, just having a, a much more stable situation long-term. And I know, um kind of in speaking with you that you kind of work with folks in creative ways for um, kind of financing different types of medical (laughs) dental procedures. (laughs) Um, You know, for folks here in Colorado, obviously they can come to your location. There, there, you know, maybe people outside of Colorado listening to this. What are some of the kind of creative financing options your office does so that people can be kind of keep their eye out and know that there's options when it comes to kind of paying for dental, dental health. Absolutely. So, um, we do take some insurance, so we do always, you know, try to get as accurate an estimate as possible before we do any treatment. You know, we are all about transparency and want to make sure that you know exactly what's happening, or at least to the best of our abilities with what we've been provided, um, before we do anything. So based on, you know, your budget, if it makes sense, we can split things up into payments, especially if we're talking about treatment, that's going to be prolonged over an extended period of time. So, um, you know, we'll come up with whatever down payment makes sense that will fit into the budget. And then the rest will get spread out over the duration of treatment. So for something like this, we kind of treat it like ortho and they'd be on like a a monthly plan for, you know, probably like six months to a year is what we would kind of spread things out to. Um, Alternatively, we do take care credit. So that's another one that's really helpful because care credit, you can use anywhere. You can use it at the vet, the doctor, the dentist, pretty much anywhere that's like 
health related. Um, so it's, I think, a really nice choice if somebody's, you know, wanting to do something. An in-office plan doesn't maybe make the most sense. Then care credit's a, a good option too. Um, and then for people that don't have insurance, we actually have like a, an in-office membership program. So it basically acts like insurance. There's like a, you know, for the year you buy in and you get your two exams, two cleanings and across the board discounts on all of our services. So um, that I find to be super helpful because in general, dental insurance is not always the most helpful for people. Um, It's not like medical insurance. It doesn't cover a lot. Your maximums are usually fairly low. So um, for a lot of people, this is a really economical option because the buy-in is pretty much the same as what you'd pay for insurance anyway. And there's no trying to fight with the insurance. It's just a straight discount. So um, yeah, that's kind of what we have. I love that. And, you know, before we wrap up here, I had a few final kind of questions. And I know um, you are a mom and you own your own business and yeah. you're, you work full time. Um, can you tell us a little bit about kind of how that process of, has gone for you and how you have kind of balanced um, kind of your work and your life and, and all of that together? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's been crazy. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I don't know if any mom that works full time and owns their own business would say otherwise, if they, if they can, I want to meet them. <laughs> um, but yeah, actually I bought this practice when Jason was like five and a half months old. So that was maybe a little crazy, um, <laughs> but ultimately I always knew I wanted to own my own practice. Um, you know, dentistry is something that I love. Um, and like I said before, you know, it's something that I, I want to bring to people comfort and joy in going to the dentist. And I, I knew the only way that I would really be able to do that is if I, you know, got to kind of call, call the shots myself and not really go by somebody else's philosophy. Cause you know, everybody has their own way of doing things. Um, so it's been really, really nice. I mean, there was a lot of, you know, work to do in the beginning. We rebranded because it basically, I, I bought a fixer upper. (laughs) And so there was no shortage of things to do, but it was awesome. I mean, I really got to build like what means a lot to me and it's turning into like my dream. It's, it's been awesome. Um, I would say like kind of the biggest things I had to learn really early on. Um, I'm type A, like most dentists are (laughs) and a perfectionist. And it was really hard for me to just like delegate and let go. And, you know, I, I feel like I have to have my hands on everything because I want it done perfect. But there are certain things like cooking dinner, cleaning the house, like things like that. My husband is amazing. He takes off of my plate almost like a hundred percent. And, um, you know, maybe he doesn't clean the dishes and things the way I would, but you know what? he does it. And it's awesome. (laughs) I can let go, you know, the counters will get clean another time. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd say like letting people help me has been like the biggest thing to learn. And, um, the other things that I, you know, kind of implemented really early on was, you know, I was breastfeeding my son until he was almost a year. I didn't quite make it. Um, but I would get him up in the morning and feed him before I left. And then I would always like put him to bed. And even when I stopped, you know, I still do that. I wake him up in the morning or he's up in the morning. We have like, you know, 45 minutes to like, he drinks his milk. I eat my my breakfast. We like hang out. And um, I pretty much set like a firm. I leave the office between 530 and six at the very latest, no matter what, whatever else can wait till tomorrow. Um, because it's important to me to come home and spend some time like, you know, winding down and having that evening time with him before he goes to bed. Um, and then I put him to bed and that's like kind of our time for the day. Um, without that, I feel like I would really have a hard time because it does feel like I'm gone a lot, which is, you know, there's a lot of guilt (laughs) that you feel just being gone a lot. Um, but I guess what I've learned is just, you know, being present when I'm there and being present at work when I'm at work. And I try my very best to keep things really separate and, 
You know, when I'm at home, I'm at home. I'm not on my computer. I'm not on my phone. I'm spending time. And when I'm at work, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like it's lighting a fire under every single day. I mean, I don't really take my like admin times at lunch, just get it all done and, and get out of here. So it's been working really well. It took some time to kind of get into the groove, but, um, but yeah, I think you can absolutely have the best of both worlds. I love that. And such great tips. I mean, being able to really offload and also really be present and when you're there. I mean, so many times, um, even with starting an own, your own your business, it's so hard to not feel like you have to work it 24-7. So I love that you've kind of set that boundary and that um, it has been so valuable for you, both for your, I'm sure it makes the time, but the quality of the time <laughs> in both areas even better. So yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for speaking with me today. And before we sign off for people in Colorado, what is the best way for them to get in touch with you? Yeah, for sure. So, um, I am always available via emails, probably the best. I check my email often. Um, and my emails, Dr. Allie at highforestdental.com. Um, our website too does have like a contact us little section. So if you send us a message there. Um, that also would get to me and um, calling the office, you know, we're here. So I would say that'd probably be the best. And do you have any kind of initial visit type process or, or promo or anything like that? Yeah. I mean, as far as people with no insurance, we have like a $99 new patient special where we kind of do everything um, for people. And actually kind of, I think we're going to basically do this indefinitely because I don't know when this COVID stuff's going to go away, but for anyone who owns their own business um, or like a 1099 independent contractor, we're discounting that in-office plan by like 40%. So um, that we're trying to make as affordable as possible just because, you know, we got to support each other. <laughs> um, and then for people that do have dental insurance, generally that first visit's going to be covered. So um, there's no copay. Great. And I will definitely include those links in the show notes. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Allie Brown. I really thank you. Yeah. Have a great day. Hey mama. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Head over to my website, www.findpam.com for all the show notes and links. And you will also get access to my free legal tool to name legal guardians. It's all right there at findpam.com.